the illicit. Shadows of the illicit. A Dun. movie written, directed, produced. What else did you do? Edited by. Edited, lit, uh, camera, and audio. And Antonio, what did you do in this? I don't actually remember. What did I do in this movie? <laughs> uh, I a starred in it. I acted in it. Uh, yeah, that's right. I was actually going to say, Joe, you did some acting. I think you didn't give yourself credit for the shadows walking by. Yeah. Wasn't that you oh, in one scene? Oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, me, I... Me and uh, Nathan. <laughs> Nathan did that, but he had to have a partner that day. Oh, yeah. Um, I played uh, Milo in Shadows of the Illicit. The main man, Milo. The main madman Milo. Ooh, madman Milo. I like that. <laughs> That'll be used in the uh, in the feature. In the sequel. That's my whole goal. My whole goal was that, you know, some Don Draper, John Hamm would see this and go, oh, we're going to bring back Madman and bring him in it. Um, he could be from the competition. The agency down the street. I just want to meet Joan. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Uh, so... Uh, I don't know. It was, uh, it's a lot longer of a process, though, I will say, than what you uh, think when you watch it. Okay. Uh, how do you mean? Like, like in the production-wise of just the... Yeah, I think when we all watched it... Well, the it movie's all... like 33 minutes running time, and it goes by, as, as others mentioned, like 10 minutes. You know, oh, it just goes it's by. It's a fast, fast but pace. And Which I think is a good thing, yeah. because oh, yeah. no, when, when it goes too. by fast, you're sucked in. When it takes forever, it's a pretty bad sign. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but... Yeah, you... uh, but the shoot itself, I think we shot for, at least I did, I want to say six weeks, yeah, yeah, somewhere cause around you, there, because I had to go longer. Your, your scenes were the most, because we shot the flashback scenes and the intro also. Right, which, right, right, right. The exterior scenes, the exterior scenes. That is true. Yeah. So uh, when everybody was yelling, it's a wrap at the end, it, I'm like, not for me. Not for, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, for, not for Antonio, Nathan, or myself. So uh, to any of you actors out there, think twice before you take a lead. Yeah. <laughs> take the, take uh, the so, scheduled time and yeah, then add, like, yeah. almost double it. If no. you're the mentality that likes part-time work, uh, 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 supporting roles, which which we were looking for. <laughs> yeah. There are no small parts to small actors. Yeah, yeah. Small you're here from the beginning to the end, from early to late. Um, <laughs> but still, I would I wouldn't trade any of it because, uh, especially the finished product, I was really happy with it. Really, okay. really happy with it. And I understand that the audience is very happy with, like you're saying, because it it flowed for them yeah. very quickly. Yeah, it did its story, which is a, a feat in itself to make a production. Of this financial level, <laughs> yeah, or, or lack of financial, lack of financial <laughs> level. Yeah, I wanted to say it nicely, yeah. um, but to make it to where, yeah, it'll engage the audience and and take the audience along for a ride for thirty minutes. That's very hard. A lot of people don't realize that. You know, it's very hard to do it for five minutes, let alone for thirty minutes successfully, and pull everyone along with it to the very yeah I, to the very I, end. It's funny because I remember once after a f like. A, I guess like the first week or second week when I started seeing the dailies, I started thinking, Oh, you know what? I think we have something here. Oh yeah. Yeah. That fast. Cause I, after every shoot, I would go home and watch all the takes, you know, because we might have to, you know, you never know. You oh, might yeah. have to reshoot some the next day. So I wanted to make sure that we didn't have to reshoot any of them. So already seeing all the takes mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm already seeing it unfold the movie edited even though i wasn't physically doing any editing i was already seeing it in my head uh -huh. how it's coming out and I, and I started thinking you know what this is really this is you know coming together pretty good and i think you know we have and, and then further down the line once i started editing it was you know it was a confirmation of what i was believing because it was really just starting to, to come together yeah. uh, more than i expected because you know it's one thing when you're shooting and you're kind of guessing how it's going to, you know, match up, oops, match up with each other, all the shots. And then I started putting it together and it started to flow and had, <clears throat> excuse me, the pacing and everything. It just started to really pick up. And then once the momentum I was into it, it just like, okay, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's really. You're more, seeing how like, yeah, the mesh of, of the, 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 not only the angles and the shots that you're taking what they're doing, but also that the actors, their, yes. their pacing and their work yeah, together. And, and it's just their commitment. And actually the, connecting. And the believability yeah. of the actors and everything like that. I oh, mean, yeah. you know, some were, 
some of the shots we had uh, just a few takes and some we had a lot of takes right. you know just a lot of it's for technicality um, a lot of it was you know uh, just so I can get a few more options because I would do the same thing but I move the camera just a slight more to one side or to another angle or I also just go okay well how about we you know to myself I'd say okay we shot it this way and then I would tr in my mind I just get this idea like hey, let's just try the same thing but from another angle here that I didn't think of previously ah. so and so the actors would do the same thing I mean they just the grind, same grind, grind thing it out, grind a it few out. a few <laughs> more takes what's exactly qualifies as a few because <laughs> Joe I remember yes. take nine take ten okay guys let's do this one more time yeah. and I think after a while we all got used to okay Joe this is do not one. say that anymore this, okay, this, this is, is not one. the last take yeah, do not lie one. to me and I remember <laughs> I remember Antonio would would wisecrack sometimes, you know, it's like, yeah, right. You, you keep know, saying that right. word. I don't yeah. think you know what it this means. Is, yeah. Yeah. You keep saying okay, it. one more time. Well, which time was the one more time? Yeah. <laughs> and I it's would like I'm say working with Michael Mann. <laughs> and I would even say sometimes, yeah, I, I know I lied. Okay, let's just do it again, you know. But you know what? The finished product is what really... Uh, yeah. And I and I can understand it. I really can understand that... that some stuff's going to work and some stuff's not. So it's better to have more cards on the table. And uh, yeah. it, it is tedious because you're, the raw energy you have when you start a scene might not be the right shot. And then maybe that third or fourth take, you're feeling it and you're like, okay, this is good. I don't want to lose it. Please right. tell me that's it. And once you're on to one of those long, long several takes, <laughs> seven, eight, nine takes, and then you're like, Okay, I can't do this anymore. Now I just I'm just saying the lines. And yeah. You're it, performing with your teeth out right here. I think I love you. I think yeah. I'm doing it right. Am I not? And uh, but uh, it, it is one of those things you have to yeah. deal with if you're going to do this. Oh, so yeah. if you're used to theater acting, this is a completely different animal. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I just all out of sequence and you know oh, yeah. like, kind of. Yeah, everything's out of sequence. Yeah. Which yeah, it's a weird thing for people to to comprehend that as an actor or as, as an audience member, right. a, a viewer to see it and think of the fact that, yeah, it looks like you're going from one shot. You say your line and then they cut to her saying her line and cut back and forth. And everyone's like, Oh yeah, it was just naturally going. And it's like, no, yeah. he said all his lines. And then four days later, she said all her lines. Yeah. yeah. And to make sure that that energy matches and that it, right. it uh, right. you know, everything it's, it's like a, a symphony. Everything has to go together right. correctly. The, Cause even your performance can be right. But then the edit pacing has to be right. right. Like it exactly. has to switch just and like you just said, uh four days go by. Yeah. And uh when you have these long breaks where say we shoot facing <laughs> Leah, uh -huh. following four days later, we shoot the same scene facing me. You're not exactly you think you are, but you're not hundred percent the energy level and everything. Uh -huh. You're trying yeah. to rematch that. So yeah. it is it is interesting to see it edited together and notice. Wow, nobody even realizes there's a four-day gap in yeah. between each of those oh, takes. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and sometimes it wasn't even the actor or the actress. It was like, it was Nathan uh. reading the lines back. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, the, you know he, because there were times where, for example, like with uh, Anna Maria who, or, or Anna Strickland, who played uh, uh, Mabel, she, she wasn't here, you know, and, and Nathan oh. would read the lines and Antonio would react it, and vice versa. Or right. Antonio and Nathan's wasn't reading here. it how Nathan reads it. Right. Not, exactly. You know, he could try to be like exactly. them, but it's nothing. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and, and, that, and a lot of times it's just it's just days later, or even like another week later, mm -hmm. because when we first started shooting the scenes, we just shot this uh, the first part of the movie, the, the first third, where just all um, uh, it was just Milo and Ruby, and then they were all facing one way. Uh -huh. And then we shoot them from another angle facing the other way. And we'd have to match those up because it literally was within like a few minutes in like in the scene running oh, yeah. time, yeah. you know, but there was literally a few weeks from <laughs> just difference of, of time, you know, in this movie from one shot to the next, what is the farthest time in between? That, that if you could remember that, like you know, was it? Oh, that's you know, easy. because like you might have shot <laughs> and then two weeks. Cause the, it was six weeks of shooting time, roughly right? about six or weeks. About six yeah. weeks. So you could have technically had one shot in the first day, and then the yeah. opposite angle 
six weeks yeah, later. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's <clears throat> did some, you know what was the farthest it's apart. It's really hard because it's all over the place. Okay, you know, okay, for yeah. me to really, but it's it was weeks, several weeks. Yeah. When I so th- saw yeah. the movie itself, it was the scene where I start to describe how the robbery went oh, down, yeah, yeah. and then the film cuts to the actual robbery, right. me doing the robbery, and then running and getting shot because that shot. The actual robbery and all that, uh-huh. I want to say it was four or five weeks after me doing the actual monologue. So yeah, that, yeah. Well, in, the monologue was one of the first few things we shot. Right. That oh, was wow. either the first or second week. It so, was the first week, actually. Okay, well, yeah. then there you go. There you we go. shot the running the final week right. and the monologue the first week. Oh, wow. So there was so, a yeah, six like, week yeah. split between those two edits. <laughs> right, 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 right. But right. still, when everyone watches it, it they it's think just for some reason, oh, complete. yeah, he ran outside and went over there. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> a, because, oh, no. because everything in the movie <laughs> takes place in one evening. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which is a challenge as a director, right? right? As you're writing it, you're like, oh, this is great. It's all in one yeah. place, all one time. And as a director, you're like, oh, crap. Now I got to make it look like it all takes place at one time. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, yeah. You and you sit. know what? You, Joe, I, I mean, I know how difficult it is because I, in my job, when I'm supervising, if if I have people not getting along or whatever, and, and you are basically, as my wife likes to put it, She says actors are like kindergartners because she taught kindergarten before. And she says, there's so much drama with actors. Uh It's like a room of kindergartners. So not only are you trying to direct them to do their job, you're trying to put out the little dramatic fires that oh, the yeah. kindergartners are starting. Like, stop looking at me. Stop touching me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> Keeping and it's, peace on the set. Right. Yeah. And and I got to say, it's it's. I think it's a testament for the director, especially when he's got to carry wear all the hats, <laughs> that, that he's trying to keep all this under control at the same time trying to keep the professionalism on film. So, because uh, uh, as much fun as it looks, I would not want the job. <laughs> well, I was just thinking of that, of how we started out. We were saying all the things that you did on this show and then the thing you did on this Antonio. <laughs> but the yeah. thing is, right, as a director, though, you think about it, everyone thinks of the movie as his movie, as a yeah. movie. Even though it's your movie, oh, yeah, the yeah. face of it. Right. You know, and isn't that sad? It's like the Oscars. When when the yeah. movie wins an Oscar, when the, when the movie itself wins an Oscar and the producers go up there, yeah. People are looking at them. Who are these guys? Are these yeah, guys? Yeah. And they're, you know, if it wasn't it for anybody. these people, that movie wouldn't have been made. But you know what? I'm I'm happy with that. I have, oh, no, yeah. I have no problem with that. I mean, you know, for for one thing, like okay, let's say we all become famous. Okay? Right. Now, I can easily walk down the street without getting mugged. You know, for yeah, autographs. Yeah. 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 Now, Antonio they're going to steal mugged. it from oh. me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I can be more, you know, you know, incognito. Yeah. You know, and, and anonymous. As opposed to those who were in the movie, you right. know, visually in the That's movie. That's true. That's true. You know, so I'm okay with that. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. guess that is also the downside of being the actor in it, is that, and you are the face of the movie, and also you are to everybody else, you're the character. Yeah. That's yeah. all they know about you. You know what? You know? That is really funny you say that. <laughs> um, Milo, not so much, because uh, Milo is just, he is a criminal, but he is a. Uh, I'll call him mafioso organized oh. criminal. Mm. He's not uh, vicious, vicious in that sense. Uh-huh. But I have done a role where I was uh, in a horror film and uh, I was recognized at an audition uh-huh. and a girl got up and moved. And I, I'm kind of forward. I think I'm a little autistic like that. <laughs> I went up and asked her why she moved and she flat out told me, weren't you in that movie? And I'm like, that was a character, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But I could see how people, because... As a, as a kid growing up, my parents never liked Clark Gable or Vivian Lee. Mm. The only thing they'd ever seen them in was Gone with the Wind. Yeah. And as an adult, when I finally saw the movie, I'm like, so you didn't like these two actors because of their snob characters on yeah. film? Yeah. <laughs> Man, they, to me, that's a good actor. They yeah. pulled it off, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And uh, it's almost funny. At the premiere, I almost felt like some people were a little distant to walk up to me. But that's a good test. I guess, I guess. You know what I mean? <laughs> it shows that like people are projecting that onto you and they, they think that of you that, oh, oh no, you... he can't be in the other way because he plays that <laughs> He's got a gun. Oh, yeah, yeah, He's yeah. got a gun. Oh, yeah. Watch out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because I'm so not the Milo character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think about the, the characters. I made sure to make them where they, they're not like, they don't kill innocent people. They're not like Bonnie and Clyde, mm-hmm. you know. 
the place that they stole from was an organized crime place. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like they just robbed some mom and pop place who worked hard for their money. Right. They robbed a place that was already with dirty money. It was already yeah. robbing other people. Exactly. Work. It's like yeah, thief yeah. robbing a thief kind of right, thing. You right, know? Right. So, um, Which gives the characters... Because um, sometimes when they do, when people do a story and you're trying to do the anti-hero, if you right. will, and they don't give you a valid reason to root or even go along with the the protagonist of you know like oh well you know they're just a bad guy right. and then but by doing it that way by making it to where you know it's not a robin hood but it is it's a thief against a thief right now you're like okay yeah they're they're kind of being good within a bad world right right you know right. in a way and right. so that makes the audience was well, different rules in that more. kind of world yeah where, yeah where you know you're not hurting innocent people yeah you know, it's the business of crime. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and before the uh, <laughs> third element of robbers enter the room, the uh, <laughs> you you get to actually feel, I think, uh, empathy for Milo and, and Ruby. Yeah, because you do. Because yeah. they're very real. Yeah, they're very real. It might be criminals, but and, there's and you, a realism oh, yeah. to them. And you see them open up in, a little bit. You know, they, mm-hmm. they open up and you, you, know, you kind of root. And I remember at the screening, I don't know if you noticed this, but after, after uh, Mabel and Donnie go out with the money and everything you i remember hearing like oh yeah because because <laughs> Ru- milo got, and ruby got robbed, got robbed. So it's like, like, oh, you know no. you can felt that the audience was with milo and ruby yeah. you know good, right? yeah, yeah. Good you sense that yeah you i it? very much i felt well i told you that i felt this like like uh you want to jump up and cheer oh, when yeah. you realize milo and ruby come out in the oh, end yeah, you know you just you exactly you, you know and, <laughs> and uh it's just it's funny i, I remember <laughs> There's a scene where I'm hiding the money in the film that you find out later towards the end what I'm doing. And uh, one of the people, audience members of the premiere came up and asked me, I was dying to know what you were doing under the covers when she was talking to the cops. Yeah. Because you just see me doing something under the covers and it's 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 really quick and really, yeah. you know, and it's... it's your, your, I, I told the young lady, I says, now, now remember, this is a 1950s film, so think about where you're going with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, uh, I was really happy with all of it. I really liked the way it came out. It, it, the, it didn't have the noir like a lot of uh, people do when they do the... Uh, the standard film noir. Yeah, the yeah. cinema from the 50s. We're going to remake it, and we're going to yeah. make it all noir and yeah. dark. And it, it, it just... It gave that element. You actually get sucked into the story. You forget so much about details and, oh, look at the clothes and look yeah. at the hat and the haircut. Mm-hmm. And exactly. You know what I'm saying? You're actually following the story and you right. forget these are people I might know as you're watching them or whatever. You're, you're actually sucked into that story all the way to the end. And even though it's a short, it's, uh, it's a pretty long short. I think 30, 35 minutes for a short is pretty long. Yeah. For a short. Oh, I yeah. Mean, because yeah. a lot of them are just like 10, 15 10 minutes. minutes. Most shorts are under 10 minutes. Right. Yeah, because I didn't, I didn't want to do the lighting like film noir. I, I, that's why uh, I, when I was doing the, the Q&A, I said I wanted it you know, to be like a, a cheap motel. Because a lot of cheap motels have bad lighting. You oh, know, yeah. They, they yeah. have. Yeah. What are you, you know? saying about my office? Are you saying yeah. that the lighting is <laughs> No, we didn't use any lights. Like, we we, uh, no, we, we didn't use any yeah, yeah. I think there was lights. one day we left the lights on. And didn't realize it until he watched the dailies uh, and could oh, tell yes. the lighting was off. So we had to reshoot those scenes. All those scenes that we did. It was, no one realizes that. that mm-hmm. like light is very, each light source is a very different thing. Right, yeah. right. And, right. and what you're not thinking about when, you're, when we're saying this is like you got this shoot today. And then four days later you're shooting the other angle. If that light is present the first time, mm. and you're just clipping back and forth the edits, cut you to, cut this. to. Oh my God! How come his ver? <laughs> how come he looks olive and she looks green? Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah exactly. Oh, yeah. Because when I when I I remember when I realized it, I go, oh man. And then I was watching the clips and things. It has more of a bluish tone oh, to it. Great! I got to tell Antonio. Yeah, he's gonna oh, make all this oh, drama yeah. over this. Yeah. <laughs> or, you, or you just go. Black and white, everything done. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> that would be the fix, yeah, yeah. right? Black and white. That's what's good about watching dailies. Daily. Yeah. <laughs> to literally be able to go back and go, oh, yeah, that's messed up. And then let's yeah. go back and reshoot that. Which is something you don't hear of with short films, right? 30 minutes or, or below with most short films is the time that you put into one six-week shoot. Rarely, you know, for a short film. Yeah. You know, usually mm-hmm. people like, they run through it real fast. And then the fact that you were able to go back and do retakes 
or or you know fix pick up, something pick up shots pick yeah. up shots and 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 which is also very good like it's a very unheard of thing with the, like I, as long as you get yeah. everyone on board to commit yeah, yeah. because uh, you you did express from other projects you've worked on the uh the lack of commitment and and not yeah. just the actors you know you've got uh i think we had a sound guy the first week and never again first one night first he night gave up too. he didn't he like staying up. up late and uh i guess it wasn't what he expected right right and uh, i'm not trying to say anything i'm just right. saying no, no, you you know uh you you do a project like this and let's just say for example you're three weeks into the shoot if an actor drops out oh it's yeah. gone. You know, yeah. you got to reshoot yeah. everything. So yeah. that would yeah. require the commitment of all the actors to redo it and the production crew. Right. So right. when you do something like this, that's six weeks long and it is a short, you got to get up front that these people are all committed yeah. to, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. cause yeah. it's, it, it could destroy everything. Just crumbles to the ground. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That's why when I wrote this, I wanted just the least amount of moving parts as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, one location. Yeah. And just originally the four, I, I didn't even have, the extras in mind at the time uh -huh. because originally we were just going to go with the monologue oh that's and right then, and then afterward I, I thought you know what that's a pretty long monologue we might lose the audience so mm -hmm. then I started thinking okay we should do the do the actual visual of it especially in this type of production that six week long production um, and the level of commitment from the actors from the crew to go from the beginning to the very end and because you don't not give up life comes mm -hmm. up right things get in mm -hmm. so i'm sure that it was six weeks long because not because it took six weeks to shoot it it was because there were other things that would get in the way scheduling well, would have to be changed and stuff in order to fit well what happened was originally i planned to go like from six to like one in the morning and then mm -hmm. you know wrap up and get out by two but uh we had i guess the, the first night was kind of like that uh -huh. we had a real long night but I guess we had the complaints. Yeah. And then we, had to, we couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that was something I didn't know that right, was a problem right, until right. You, know, you don't know until it happens. And then yeah. so I believe we went till almost 3 a.m. that first night yeah, or that yeah, first weekend. Yeah, it was yeah. really early. Yeah. And then uh, then we found out we could only shoot from 6 to 10 or something like that. Okay. So that like cut your production in yeah, half right there. Right. right? We could because yeah. we could have shot it a lot, you know, less weeks. Right, right. We were. Be, you know, that's right because we did talk about like a three or four week production time yeah. so that mm -hmm. that actually i'm amazed you did it in six weeks having lost half the hours every night yeah. so oh, yeah because we even though we had four hours we literally had maybe like two and a half hours to shoot right because you know setting up and then breaking down and then just uh by the time we were ready to shoot you know um and we shoot then we had break time so we literally i think just shot Two and a half hours a night. Oh wow! So, and then wow. oh, oh, the wow. setup and break time. That's I forgot right. about chips. So that's what, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Eating our chips. Six mm. to ten was your frame frame right time. Yeah, right. and so you, everyone forgets. You got yeah, you got to set up. You got to break down. Yeah. So it's never in the break. So it never breaks. Yeah. And then Lee and I would fight over the mirror while we were trying to do makeup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Oh yeah. well, we there was like people out sometimes oh. at the parking lot, and we're all, oh, what are they doing? well, that's you know, yeah. yeah, this area. That's why I, I like I try to. Uh, Leah to knows I have late. the rule of you're out of here by night. You're not here at night because it, because it, I am a so inferior female. <laughs> oh, well, we we had I believe there was <laughs> one kidding. night, if memory serves me correctly, where there were like some gangbangers out there playing rap music like or something, music, yeah. Oh, yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, we're shooting here. And here. Well, went out one being time. that I'm Milo, I was voted the one to go talk to them. And since I had the suit well, he was and the gun, like a gangster, I was yeah. dressed like a gangster. <laughs> put a, I put a, I put a yeah. hanger inside my jacket to have a zoot suit. <laughs> but uh, they told me they were leaving in a few minutes, and I came back. They turned their music up, but they did leave in a few minutes. Oh, okay. So there was a toot, and then they left. Yeah, yeah it was uh, an F you. <laughs> See, that's the thing that people don't know that about how like you had a whole production, all this other stuff to overcome, right? Mm -hmm. Losing time or yeah, your 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 frame during the day of uh, or the you're supposed to have what an eight hour day. Now you have a four hour day, and then the fact that you're shooting at night, late at night, in an area that I'm I'm nothing happens. 
Right. But then you get some does happen. Get it some is predominantly out. homeless, though, mm-hmm. because yeah. the night. What, what yeah. it is, everything that's ever happened around here, it's a matter of crime of oppor- uh, It's a matter of opportunity. Right. Like if you, if everyone happened to turn their backs, they would have came in and took the camera and took off. If you oh, just, yeah, yeah. you know, they're not going to come and rob you. They're going to come and grab something real quick and run right. out. Right. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, yeah. But I do. With all that being yeah. said, I do have to say, the fact that we actually got to see a finished product was amazing because i've done so many things where i never see anything why not out of it um either it wasn't finished or the person dropped off the face of the earth you haven't gotten all the stuff you've done everything you're kidding are you no we i am being very sarcastic we were talking about this (laughs) earlier that uh that uh we what is it joe you figure about 70 percent of the stuff you do you don't get so so uh, it's it's i guess it was important to bring it up again because it is a huge thing that you did this so on your own. So if you're working with Joe Arrego, you will get a finished product. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I think every actor, like we were saying, I was saying before, should have a simple contract of expectations. Give and me one something. of them is that. Yeah. The well, fact when that you, you're going to get you, at least the raw. The raw this, yeah. this yeah. granted, was a local production, but I've driven, like I said, LMU, yeah. Hollywood, LA. You know, you're driving distances. Mm-hmm. It's costing you gas money, your time. Right. And you're not being paid on a lot of these projects. So, right. of course, you want a copy. That's the whole reason you're doing exactly. it. Oh, yeah. So, so it, must have been, it must have been nice for you having a local production, not having Oh, the wow. Down. You know, yeah. I, I, I mean, it. you having to do everything, it took longer to get the, the final pr- production. Mm-hmm. So I had kind of stopped worrying about it. So when you started saying it's almost done, I'm like, oh, nerves started, you know, yeah. going on edge. I'm sure you understand, Leah. Not knowing yeah. what, we were, what to see, you know. I mean, yes. six weeks of production. So he texted uh, me that day. Very like, excited. I'm not sure about you, but I'm nervous as hell. <laughs> <laughs> all, are you kidding me? Yes. Oh, I still. Oh my gosh, even thinking about it right now, I got the same butterflies again. Oh, yeah, but, I remember how nervous you were at premiere night. Gosh, I couldn't and stop Antonio shaking. Too, yeah. yeah, what the heck is it's, that? Uh, you know, it's funny. My f- I, I brought several friends, and my wife, she was just, she's like, oh my god, it's so good. She really liked it and uh when you do a scene where you know i'm a married man so if i do a scene where i'm actually going to kiss another actress it doesn't matter that my wife is comfortable in our relationship i'm still taking her to see on screen in front of all these people <laughs> look at me babe i'm kissing another girl <laughs> and uh she was so sucked into the story it's not like she saw milo as me like i said yeah. the character is so yes. different than me she was sucked into the story and yes. she believed it and she even, I think you guys talked for quite a while, so I was happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I do have to say, so I was telling my husband beforehand, um, excuse me. We all I was telling, I, I just, <laughs> sorry. Um, I was telling my husband, I'm like, what? Come on, it's only two kisses, right? I, 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 in my, I swear this whole time I forgot that there was like, I don't know, 20. But, um, I was all, there's only two, like, dude, come on, come on. Okay, so we're there and there's the first one. Okay, and we, we got through that. All right, here's the second one. I'm like, okay, whew, we're done. I was like, oh, oh shit, God. I forgot about that one. Oh, and that one, <laughs> and that one. So then afterwards, I did ask him. I was like, so, you know, how'd you how'd you like it? He's like, yeah, it was, it was cool. He's, he's a man of very few words. And he was just like, <laughs> it was cool. He's like, it's a little more kissing than I was uh, prepared for, but, you know, we're cool. So, I mean, it didn't end in divorce. I was really <laughs> worried yeah. about that. I was like, it, it is a big deal. And it's and I could see why, you know, in Hollywood, there's so many breakups. I swear. I mean, well, Mary, my wife's name is Mariana. Mariana said you believe those two characters are in love. Mm-hmm. And she says, and I think when there's a dynamic, even if it's just acting, if you're being a good actor, there's people that don't understand acting and they're going to see like, well, you guys yes. had something going on yes. yeah, because yeah, like you can't intimate. just pretend to have this that chemistry, you know, yeah. but what, what the audience doesn't realize is every night. Oh my God, Leah, do you know how to kiss? Oh, shut up. You have bad breath. It's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, seriously, it's not, you know, Leah, can you not make that face when you're going in for the mm. kiss? Oh, I'm so sorry. But that was not an, it was not intentional. Mm. I do. I'm not disgusted by it. <laughs> He even though he's like questioning that. Well, and I'm how, like, long, how long have you been married? Is the thing, right? Uh, yeah, almost like five years. But I mean, even I don't. It's but just, that's the thing is, you, five years I'm not kissing another person, and now you have to go kiss another person. It is a psychological without a, without like that connection beyond you know just right. acting. Right, right. Yeah, it's hard to like. Oh. 
hard. You know, yeah. it, it, it's hard. And I had to that. bite his lip. Like, oh, oh yeah. my God. That, talk yeah. about intimate. I'm sorry, but even as actors, and that doesn't seem as intimate, but when you see it on camera. Oh, yeah. I oh, yeah. My <gasps> wife, I did see her head cock a little on the, on the, on the lip bite because I'm sorry. That looked kind of hot. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize but I, I did, and cool. I told my husband about that. I'm like, yeah, and I bite his lip, but I kick him in the balls after. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Oh, yeah, because wow. at first it looks like when he slams uh, Ruby against the wall, it looks like they're gonna go at it because uh-huh. there's there's that there's a certain energy there, and uh, the first kiss it looks like they're about to start to go get heavy, and then boom, she bites the lip. And then the knee and then, you know, the fall and everything like that. But yeah, it does look like a unjust, you know. yeah. completely unjust. Uh, Milo yeah, did, did have nothing. like a disclaimer. If she gets me once, even just once, we're done. Yeah. And, and I take number seven. And I, yeah. and I did. And I went done. down and Joe's was like. Was that the take? Was that the take you took? Uh. I think it was. I think oh. it was the last take. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, "What? I barely touched you." And then they had the whole talk of like, "No, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it really you do hurts." Not understand? You do not understand. <laughs> I, I remember. I, I remember, I remember uh, Antonio's. <laughs> word, just thinking about. I was it gonna now. do another shot, another take, and he goes, no, "I'm done. I'm done. Yep. We're done." And Joe's done. like, "No, no, just we're Antonio, done. just one more." I said, "Joe, we're done. Read my lips. We're done. I'm done." Yeah. <laughs> she got him. She saying, got him. This isn't a fake shot anymore, Joe. She got them both. Yeah. You remember that little thing you had as a kid with the string and the two balls? <laughs> she got them both. It's like clackers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I just, you know, it's like funny. Clackers. When we when we originally got the scripts, I even said as a, in my mind, okay, I'm going to have to get, you know, uh, make sure the suit fits. We're getting, he got the suit tailored. We had fittings, all this. I got to make sure I get a cup because I do not want to risk, you know, get a cup. I've got a jock strap. I play sports. I can do this. I just got to make sure I get a cup. I never got around to getting a cup. And then Joe announced that night we're going to shoot that scene. And I'm like, I forgot to get a cup. (laughs) And Leah must have experience in the name because you just couldn't avoid. It was like you were perfect height. Your height is perfect. They were there. I can't help it. It was in the moment. Tucked them in. I don't know. Uh, If this was my twenties, they would have been up higher. But you know, as you get older, it's just it's like a it's like that old leather satchel that gets worn (laughs) out. Oh jeez. So, moving back to the nineteen fifties. Yeah. Um. But it was a fun shoot. It really was. And you know, when I went down the uh, part where I'm laying down. And she pours because we were talking earlier about how sometimes the other actor isn't even there. Right. And uh, there was the day where she knees me and I go down, but that wasn't the day we shot her pouring the The drink drink on my face. Oh. So we actually, I want to say we shot two days without Leah and other people pouring the liquid on my (laughs) face. (laughs) Yes, Nathan, Sebastian did it. Nathan, Nathan did it, and they were uh, all hesitant to, to, you know, to like let it pour. And I was like, okay. I, I mean, there were it. takes just where I grabbed their hand and just yeah. dumped it on myself. Like, yeah. just do it, because they were all like worrying about, like, you know, uh, I don't know. They were just very like shy. Polite. About, yeah. Well, yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's yeah, like getting slapped or, or getting kicked in the nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then I just yeah. said, okay, let, I'll do it. I'll do it. So I set the camera up and everything like that, and made sure. Then I just, you know, I just just pour it down yeah actually yeah you you're the one that gave the example on how to do it thanks joe go go ahead joe i ended up doing it so the shot that we went with was the one that i actually poured it on you yeah because (laughs) that's right the way they were pouring it was like which is like drip dribbling yeah you know and the way she when you when you see her pouring it she just goes like she just dumps it on yeah yeah you know but they it just didn't match up with the way the other two were Dripping, you know, and and it's it's dripping. crazy how the audience can pick up on that. The little oh, subtle, yeah. like they don't know exactly. They can't put it in words why it's wrong, but right. they're like, no, that that it doesn't. Her match. pouring does not match what's happening down yeah. here. Right, they know right exactly. Away I'm one of those like people that, that yeah. notices yeah. those little things because the way that the other two were pouring it, it would have been like her just just holding it and just just literally just yeah. just tilting it little by little by little. No, it was like I'm I'm like stop. What are you doing? One drop trying yeah, to catch it with drop. my hand. Where's that? I'm uh, drowning. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You barely have a drop on you. Oh, I miss that. That was fun. Yeah, you know what? It's it's <laughs> it's what we thrive to do. We're actors. We want to film. Yeah. And then when you're doing it, I want to go home. I'm yeah, tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but then when you see it, you're like, oh, yeah. Isn't yes. that a great feeling? Yeah. We were talking earlier about how it's Joe's film, 
as I'm dominating here about to say this. How egotistical. It's Joe's <laughs> film, but when you watch it, my face is what they see. Mm -hmm. So how does that, like, you and I are the leads in this film, so... It's your film. It's your film. To the audience. We're on the poster, oh, right. Right? Yeah. you know. Right. So right. You're the face. Even mm -hmm. though Joe, this wouldn't take have taken place if Joe hadn't uh, not just produced and directed it, if he hadn't come up with the idea and written it. Yeah. Because he's the writer, director, producer, so... Um, and editor. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Shadow. I told you you need to add a credit for that Shadow. Mm -hmm. That was your Shadow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that IMDb funny? Like it. Alfred Hitchcock makes his appearances. Who was who, Joe yeah. in the movie? He was the that. second bodyguard shadow when I'm writing <laughs> the awesome. um, Shadow oh, number two. <laughs> and Shadows of the Illicit. I don't know if I had mentioned this before um, another time that we all spoke, but um, and I wanted Antonio to hear this. Is that a friend of mine that saw it, she said that it was really cool how the camera didn't really have to do much work because of the acting and i was like oh, oh <laughs> i know she I said love her. yeah like the <laughs> actors really did what they were supposed to do so that was nice and then also that all uh falls on joe as well because of the directing of it as i mean yeah i just it was so fun and then it just made me want to keep doing it and do another project like where's I okay, where's mm. the next project you know even though like you're saying when we're in it we're kind of like oh, okay okay like, yeah. I'm tired I'm tired because another it was a late take, shoot yeah take. but um yeah so it just it does it ignites the fire yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah well that's what a lot of people don't realize just in people in general when they see a movie you know they just see the glamour part of it they, mm. they don't realize a lot mm. of the work the long hours, long hours. Of take after take after take and and not just the actual production part of it where you're on set shooting yeah. but then the long hours writing it Right, oh, sitting yeah. there and figuring out that the long hours. Yeah, editing, that's true. We, did, we didn't just come up with the words. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, we're not yeah, just yeah, up yeah. there. Because I mean, for you, it's it's a lot of lonely again, hours. It's not your movie, but you worked three times as long as anybody yeah. else worked yeah. on. I it. could I could have worked six months on those lines, and I didn't work as long and as hard yeah, as you. So I, I understand that. Yeah, and it also is interesting. Um, so what everyone sees the fin when they see the finished product, they don't understand that it's all in these little bits and pieces that we're doing that so it yeah. actually is kind of cool when you see actors giving it their all when just a sec like a second ago they were like you know getting their makeup done and then go get into it right now you have to be mm -hmm. kiss him right now and you're like well, i can't even warm up to this mm -hmm. so it's, yeah. it is wow it, it's just it's all fascinating you, i think we're ignoring one of the biggest pieces here and that's when it's your day of a close-up and you get that brand new pimple <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> always happens i mean yeah, uh -huh. yeah. thank yeah. goodness for blu-ray now <laughs> high def I, yeah. you get every detail on the face yeah, that's why you know Botox is on the rise. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, tell your friend thank you for that. That is I will, just yeah. the sweetest compliment. I was like, that I've is had nice. if I think this is a compliment as well. I've had so many friends ask me how Mariana and I are doing after she right. has seen <laughs> what looked like a very strong on screen romance. So and it's funny because Lee and I hit it off as friends right away. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how it is with you with other actors. I don't pursue flirtation i don't pursue any kind of anything but there was never any flirtation with leah there was never any no oh there's a little <laughs> bit of awkwardness i don't want to like she's i'm sure doesn't want to mislead me and vice versa but we never had that issue we just hit it off as friends joking and yeah, yeah. clowning it was I mean, just very matter of fact yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. if anything true. if anything i would say that being like friends <laughs> made kissing weird Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's weird. gotta yeah. be what. You know yeah, what I mean? There you go. I didn't think of it that way, but yeah, there yeah. you go. I'm we like, were in Ugh. ultimate friend zone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend. <laughs> it's like kissing my brother. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Oh, so I can taste my sense. mom on you. <laughs> <laughs> then you think, why do I taste my mom on you? Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> and with that, we are done. <laughs> So how about them Dodgers? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think right. That's why, like, I think a lot of people, on the, a lot of actors, when they do kissing scenes, um, 
do that way where the mouths are closed and they kind of turn where you don't see their faces like you know they're kissing like yeah Yeah, that was our first scene that was the first yeah Yeah. and you know what it was a actually a photographer not a cameraman like on video but an actual photographer my wife and i were doing a photo shoot for our honeymoon Mm -hmm. and that's when i learned you don't pucker on a photo shoot yeah you just relax like when you actually are kissing you actually just relax and let your lips just lips just touch. Uh-huh. You're not actually kissing. Your lips just touch, and that looks like a good it photo like, kiss. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. when you pucker, duck it lips. looks so like two exactly. ducks kissing. You know, yeah. <laughs> not cute. No. Well, the last kiss in the movie, or the second to last kiss, uh, <laughs> the second, no, the third to yeah, the yeah, tenth to last. Because <laughs> there's one at there's one at the door where they leave, and then there's a little peck, and then the one before that. <laughs> Or before that, the third, <laughs> third, third to last kiss, I think it was, when he reveals, you know, the the money and everything like that, and he says some his line is something and that's why you love me, something like that, yeah. and then that kiss really to me solidified yeah. because it was the most intimate but very simple, uh-huh. and it was very very like okay, you really, to me that's. The way they did it and the way it worked out it just really solidified the relationship that showed that they really cared for each other. They really right. loved each other. It wasn't just it wasn't hot and heavy. It's right, like, right, no, right. We're right. In a relationship. Well, yeah. It was very yeah. soft. Yeah. It was very soft and endearing. And that's when I was yeah. like, oh, shit, that looked real. Yeah. Well, yeah. you look like when you're, we should get going. You know that moment where, come on, five minutes more. You know what yeah. I mean? And it, it really had that real effect of that. Yeah, and then, yeah. She and then, had yeah, and then when, she, pull away. when she, there was uh Close up shot over the shoulder, and she goes, "Yeah." Um, she grabs him, and then the, she kisses him, and then she backs away, and she goes, "We should get going." And that one kind of like, was another one that solidified their relationship too, uh. because the way she just leaned into it and smiled, and you know, it was just you haven't seen the movie, so I haven't seen it. So haven't shame seen it. on you because oh, you nice. had so much time. Yeah. So now you can go. That's a brother and sister kissing yeah. right there. <laughs> This whole movie's gonna be tainted for me when I watch it. Yeah, you can already <laughs> know everything about it. Yeah. Actually, I think the clowning worked behind the scenes because when when it just uh, relieves attention. Well, when Ruby's yeah. character is actually toying with Milo, it it just it adds to it because now's the fun part. Mm-hmm. Now I'm gonna sting ya. Oh yeah, like when <laughs> you know? she goes back to the, from the door. For well, the when cops. she throws the rag at my head, yeah. that's just so funny. <laughs> and then when you say like sorry, when when you say <laughs> pour me a drink. Pour me a drink, and then she just like you know, she turns around Excuse like me? really, <laughs> yeah, what you, you know after what I just did, and then you go, and the way you're looking at her is like a little kid going, sorry, you know? yeah. <laughs> or please, please, please. please. There yeah. was a woman that was there. She came up to me and and she, you know, we were talking about the movie, and then she said, "I really thought you were going to shoot him." She thought that I was going oh, for end? my gun to shoot. him. To shoot, to shoot you. me. Oh. Yes. Oh. I intentionally had wanted that to, to add a little like, oh. Well, it you know. worked. You know what? I, I well. Some people I thought that too. I, when I read it originally, in my mind, I thought it was going there. So the fact that you didn't, I think it's good. Because I'm not saying I go for the ultra predictable. Right. But if I'm already expecting that, maybe the audience would have expected that too. So yeah. I'm, I'm really glad you didn't. I'm glad you let us stay together. Yeah. I stole the money. I should be able to share it. Jeopardy part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people want it. Uh, I would want, I want to see, see more. I think someone did say yes. that. They wanted more. Like, yeah. Like, like yeah. More. When I, yeah. Once they got out the door. You really want to see Mabel and uh, Donnie's reaction when they open the box. Yeah. That's what uh, I think the audience uh, wants. Well, let's see right there. You I already have Mabel. all these elements that you could do a part two. That's another half hour. So now you put those two together and now you almost have... Well, you do the robbery, you got yeah. the movie. Well, yeah. the best thing is always leaving the audience wanting more. Oh, yes. That's, that's the, yeah. it's like, that's you know, the best way to do it. Best way, you know, like even if you're a stand-up comic or whatever, mm-hmm. you always want to leave the audience more. That means that they were really caught into the story. Right. So right. when I heard that, you know, uh, it really just kind of, you know, made me feel good that, okay, well, maybe I did something right here. Yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. So. yeah. It is always good to make them want more. Yeah, and not give it to them because you give everything, and then it's kind of like yeah, like it, it becomes almost predictable. If you have everything there, then they yeah. kind of saw it coming because right. you put everything out there. And I didn't want to make a Hollywood ending either, you know. Yeah. I didn't want to make like okay, they ride off into the sunset together kind of thing, you know. I mean, these people, these two, even though they're the audience has empathy for them, I still didn't want to be a, you know do a cliche kind of movie. Yeah. Because they go out there with their guns drawn, so they're still 
In, they're still in very <laughs> self-defense We're, we're Bonnie oh, yeah. and Clyde, yeah. but we don't kill people. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not like they... Just because they got out of here, uh, out of their motel right. room, doesn't mean they got away with it. So what happened out there? Because right. they were they had a long journey ahead of them the next day to literally get out of town before they're found out. Because if they the longer they stayed, the, the chances of getting caught was you know every minute was was higher and higher. Right. So possibilities, possibilities are just. I mean, yeah. Gollum could have been looking for Precious yeah. and grabbed it from him when he got outside. Yeah. I mean, it's just imagine so, the possibilities. Just, so when they leave, the audience is still like, "Oh, I wonder what happened. What, where, where did they go? What did they do? Did they finally make it away? Did they go to South America? Well, you know, all these questions. And that's right. why I think the people wanted to see more because it's like. Well, what what happened? What, what what's going on with them? You know, and it, so. and a movie should do that, yeah. right? Whether it be one minute long or whether it be, you know, a full two and a half hour long movie or half hour movie in this yeah. case, like it should leave them wanting more, wanting to wanting wanting to explore that world and right. feel like it is lived in and that there is more to it than right. what is just presented. Which is the triumph at the end because yeah. you don't. I guess I was really surprised at the end of the movie that the audience, I felt it. You you feel this triumph for the two that they yeah, get away it. with it. And you it's know? like what we talked about earlier. It's like well, the scene where, where just before Mabel and Donnie leave and they have the money and you guys are sitting on the on the bed and then Mabel says, nice knowing you, don't follow me. And they walk and there was that pause of like, you could feel the audience going, oh. Yeah, yeah. You know, you felt like, oh, shit, they got away with the money, you know? Like, yes, yes. You know? And then, cool. and then Milo, you know, they, he gets up. And the first thing he does, he has that smirk on his face, goes to the door, locks it, and turns around. And he's like, it's it's just like, because earlier, Ruby gives Milo shit about the cops saying they're looking for a guy just like you. So it's like he's paying her back in a certain way uh, by saying, yeah, you don't. You underestimate me, you know. So it's like he gets her back, you know. So. Yeah, that's right. The dialogue reverts it both ways, yeah. and and uh, you Brilliant. do believe. Yeah, no, it really. Uh, yeah. So it shows a relationship, like they're they're close enough to where they can joke with each other, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, pull prank, you know, these these kind of pranks on each other, but at the same time, they're they're serious. I mean, they're right. you know they're they're hardcore. Like when they, when Ruby's looking out the door and talking with a cop. I mean, if those cops were to come busting in, they would have they would have shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they would have shot. They were ready to shoot. And the thing too is like, were these real cops at the door? In, you know, in fake uniforms, or were these dirty cops? So having them in the scene where they're armed and ready in case, I wanted to have that tension, that sus- a suspense of the suspense of of like, okay, you know, what's what's going to happen here? And, and people I talked to said that they felt the suspense in various parts of the movie, mm. you know, which... And then you had John Medeiros the do voice. the voice for the, the cop. cop. So yeah. uh, he's so good with voices, it sounds... Oh, yeah. you, you don't hear mobster, you hear cop, but you're still like... Yeah, it's mm. like, okay, yeah, are these dirty cops, or are they fake cops? Are you the yeah. ice cream man impersonating <laughs> Because even though the cop <laughs> says, you know, just look out the window, ma'am, it doesn't mean it's, that it's just safe. You know? Oh, yeah, just, yeah. You know, that almost sounds like a taunt, like, yeah, just, just look, look out, out the, the window, window come on. you know. <laughs> he's saying, like we're in uniform, you know, you know. Yeah. But that was actually though, one of my yeah. favorite scenes cuz of my uh Ruby and I standing at the wall yeah. with the guns yeah, holding, you know, funny. facing that the that's fun. Yeah. That was all fun. So, um I did have a question. Do you, uh, Joe, do you um you know, Recycle your actors in your project. <laughs> <laughs> if they fit the the right? the, the next production, yeah, okay. yeah. But in other works. words, you're not going to do like Game of Thrones and have the same characters with different actors oh, playing yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, you know, it's funny. Even though I'm pretty much done with this, as far as I'm just getting the poster supposed to be made this week. Uh, inserts for the DVDs and then I'm building a website and everything so I'm st- it's, it's still lingering but the main you know obviously production is over I'm just yeah. everything's lingering but I'm already starting to think of what I want to do next because the idea of not having anything to do production wise is kind of scary for me because mm-hmm. I like to be in production mode oh, yeah. and I think I only need just a couple of days off you know oh, yeah. I don't really need a whole da- a lot of downtime because I'm already getting ideas just swarming through my head that, you know, there's this, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie The Doors with Jim. Yeah. Uh, oh, with, uh, Val, Val Kilmer. Kilmer. Yeah. There's a scene. 
there's a scene near the beginning of the movie where uh, Ray Manzarek's on the beach going, um, um, and then Jim Morrison comes up. He goes, try acid, Ray. And they start talking about, you know, like what they're doing. And this hit home for me when Jim Morrison says, you know, I got, he, he, he was asked, like, you should, you wrote this stuff? You, you got more stuff? You get more of this? And he's, Jim Morrison responds by saying, Ray, I got a whole concert in my head, Ray. And I got the same thing, not that I'm comparing myself to Jim Morrison, but I got the same thing in movies. I got all these things just swarming in my head. And it's not only just a visual thing, I feel it. I really feel it, you know? I really feel these images. And that's how I did my Bag of Influence. Um, and that's how I did this one, too. I start to feel it. Because it's one thing if you see it and it doesn't, you don't know, feel emotion. But it, once I start to feel, I know how to go with it. I know how to... It like leads me on, you know, it's just like I feel it and I can feel the characters. I see the scenes and I know exactly where they're coming from and I know exactly how they're going to respond. I don't know the words because once I start writing it, they start to come alive and right. they start. And I don't, I, it's almost like I'm just a stenographer just taking down notes as they're, as they're talking. I don't really know exactly what they're going to say. I just feel what they're going to say. Yeah. I, I know where they're coming from as far as the emotion of where they're coming from that creates the dialogue. You know, so I just let them go, and like I said, I have all these just different. Like one moment, I'll have something like of a something contemporary. I'm even thinking of doing a western, but that's just physically out of my. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'd love to do a western, but a western, a dark kind of you know, a uh, dark version of a western, not not the typical you know. Western. With actors playing horses, it would just yeah, be uh, unheard yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, with the horses, <laughs> the cowboys, yeah. Good old western. <laughs> I but, could do accents too. <laughs> but a lot of times I, it's music because I don't really have any one thing that inspires me. It's just mm -hmm. like if I, sometimes something gets stuck in my head, I, I'll read something or I'll hear a piece of music or I'll just see something and it, boom, it just triggers my thought. And then for some reason, sometimes it sticks with me and then it becomes more alive inside me huh. and to the point where like, okay, I got to write it down because that's how I had... Um, shadows happen because I wanted to do a production because the one I was going to do before fell through mm -hmm. and I wanted to do something but with less moving parts and I started thinking well what can I do what can I do and then I don't really remember the moment when the idea popped in it just I just knew when it was there yeah. that, I, and it started to grow and grow and to the point where I really just had to start writing it down and then it just it just took a life on its own you know, so I'm already feeling that again now mm. for a next project. I don't want to say what it is yet. I haven't decided what to go with. Right. But um, I'm I'm really I don't even know what the length if it's going to be a short or if it's going to be I don't I never know. You oh know? yeah, no no it, that that's the thing right when you go yeah. in to do a story idea or create something like that, you shouldn't have an idea of the length. Is you go the length that the story needs to be. Right. right? Yeah. Because right? you don't go okay. Yeah, this is going to be it has right. to be a feature because then. If it's yeah. Like a five minute idea. Right. Yeah. Because originally, <clears throat> I I did try to keep keep it, you know, restrain it time wise. I mean, I could have mm -hmm. gone on. I could like oh, yeah. I could have gone on to, after they left to another scene. Oh yeah. Least, you know, but I figured okay, that that's good right there. Okay, that's enough for this because it's basically just a, the movie is one long scene is what it is. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's kind of like you're working with the higher power where it's actually you're a conduit of this something like, like that yeah, yeah that's yeah. how i always see it because like that same for me i love to write and i could sit there and say i'll give myself 30 minutes to write and i'm going and it's just flow out it it's amazing when that happens and it ends up being for an hour yeah. or it ends up you know and you, it's just you have to just be open you to lose that track flow. of time mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You, yeah you lose you're you lose it's just like when i was writing there were literally times where i really felt like i was in I was there, you know, like I'm observing all this oh, yeah. going on and I would forget that it's like three thirty in the morning, yes. you know, and I got to get up in a few hours. I go, Oh shit, man, I got to get up. I'm right. In, I'm, I'm just so into it right now. Yeah. yeah. And I couldn't sleep many times because my mind is still going. It's like, mm -hmm. and then I'd literally get up, you know, after a half hour trying to sleep and just continue on and continue on and continue on. When, hmm. So what I've heard is that when you find out what makes you lose sleep, that's what you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> that is what <laughs> you got to do. Yeah. It's making you lose sleep. You can't sleep. Yeah. You lose track of time. You lose track of time. That's, and you're so that's it. Oh, Same yeah. thing happened when I was editing it too. It just like, oh, yeah. 
you know, it starts, especially like after you already get a sense of the story. It's just like, and with editing, it's, it's literally seconds by seconds. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. and you have to, you know, you just put the one piece down and now you have to find the one that matches that. And then how is this going to match with the next and next? But I don't think of it that way. I just go with the moment of that, you know, and how it feels. Yeah. And you just go with it. And then like, it'd be again, like 3.34 in the morning. And it's like, oh man, I'm just, you know, I don't even want to quit now. You know? Yeah. And then I try to sleep again and oh, I can't my mind, you know, <laughs> okay, well that, that cut would work. <laughs> okay. Just take three <laughs> three frames off that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. all that. Yeah. Well, and that's why I like saying before of, of Antonio said how you could you could have worked six months on this and you still would not have worked as long as Joe right. actually worked on this right. because of stuff like that where everyone else has done the glamour's over of shooting it and you're sitting there at three o'clock in the morning by yourself in a, in your in your bedroom with just your, the light. Of oh your yeah, yeah. No, it's kind of like that. Every <laughs> you know, they're all going off on their own lives and done and finished. And yep. it's over, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah. And you're sitting there, you know, you're you're, you're oh yeah, going I, through that whole process. It I'd be end. yeah, I'd be working out, or I'd be driving, or I'd be just be <laughs> grocery shopping or something. And my mind would be like, um, you know, the editing or the writing, or whatever, you know. Yeah. And and sometimes little things just in regular life would give me inspiration to oh okay that you know yeah. like this you know especially for writing. Because oh, yeah. once it's once you're editing it, everything's already done. But yeah, sometimes when you're writing and you you just you get to a point where not that you blank, but you just you, you're you're satisfied with what you left off for the moment. Yeah, you know, and then you're out doing something completely irrelevant to the story, and all of a sudden, boom, something you see or say, like, ah, oh, yes. yes, I could, you know, I could, you have what what you know, what I would like to call the house moment, where the house show moment. house where. Something in the world that has nothing to do with what's going on clicks into something, an answer to, it's, you didn't even know the, you had a question to right, it. You're right. like, oh yeah, that's, <clears throat> you could add this or take it that way or do something different. Yeah, because um, yeah, the edit, yeah. you're like, okay, in the script, the story doesn't start like in the movie. Yeah. Because the story starts literally exterior shot and then interior to Leah's character, Ruby. Right. But I was one night in the backyard, my backyard, and I was just trying some lens and just some technical stuff with the camera and I was shooting long shot of the freeway and then it was all like just you just you see circles just the circles out of focus circles huh. it's like what is that what is that what is it and then I focused in onto what it was and it was like the freeway and you see the headlights right mm -hmm. and then in the further back further in the background you see like some lights and stuff like that and that looked like where the casino would be ah. for the story so then I said oh that'll look great for the opening and then I added gunshots boom 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 and then we start and then we cut away to another exterior shot of the moon with some palm trees and then we hear faint sounds of gunshots still going on and then we finally get to Milo's entrance where he comes up and he looks desperate and he's running you know uh -huh. So originally it wasn't supposed to start that way, but it just, you know, just by the editing and by just, just taking some test shots, it worked out oh, yeah. that way, yeah. you know. Yeah, and that opening actually, when I'm running up at the beginning, we shot that, the whole movie had already been shot. Yeah. Uh. Just talking about stuff out of order, you know. <laughs> and that originally was supposed to be in the flashback scene. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. I changed it around a little bit, so it works, to me it works better that way. Oh, yeah. You know. Well, that's the thing. I think it's that good directors do good editors, but good directors also they're open to the idea of when they sit down in the edit room. They're open to, yeah, I know we shot that for this part of the script, but no, we're going to use that over here now. And they're yeah. they're willing to rearrange that puzzle of what you shot, right, to tell the story that is there. Doesn't matter what you what what the actors did. Doesn't matter what the script calls for. It's like now this is what you have in the edit room this is what your footage dictates it can be right you know right. which can be an entirely different story <laughs> you know well and, you know you yeah. read the script you memorize it you know it inside out over and over oh, yeah. and when you see the finished production it's still you're still in there with the audience <gasps> you memorized your lines <laughs> <laughs> yes yes yeah that Leah. monologue i was very impressed you did Ah, uh, you know what? It it's uh you had a lot of lines too. Yeah. Yeah. You remember I think theater helps with that stuff. 
Oh yeah, well, yeah. I think I think the best actors come from theater, yeah. or that, at least they have a theater base, mm-hmm. you know, because it's just. I think all actors should have it's theater really? experience. Yeah. If you go straight to film, I don't know. It's almost one dimensional. Well, theater is a actor's medium. Film is yeah. a director's medium. So an actor mm-hmm. is never going to get the full feel on film that he gets no, in theater. That's what, yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. It's like snippet, snippet here, here. You're not. Yeah. You, you don't know. really feel you it. Don't, yeah. You don't really sense the movie when you know with yeah. bits and pieces yeah. and stuff like that. But when you see the movie, it's like oh, okay. Then it all makes sense. Yeah, right. it's a new experience for us. It's like yeah. I mean that's how it, for me it was. I was like, wow, that's not me. That is Ruby. Um, just it, I don't know. It was just like amazing, like being outside of it. Now in theater, I am that per. I am physically yeah. mm-hmm. that person. But, but you don't get to see yourself. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was see pretty it. rad. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, since you were really nervous at first, how long did it take before you started calming down when you were watching the movie? Did you start? Never did. Never did. Uh, you still nervous yeah. the whole movie, even after in the reception too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When we were. Uh, You've been standing up there on the um, stage, and then of course the first question had to be like, "How did you think you did, Leah?" And I was uh, like, oh, "Oh, I don't want to answer that." I don't Who know. asked that? I don't remember. That. <laughs> Somebody. Did. And I was oh like, my what goodness! The? No. Oh, that's yeah, funny. So I was still like shaking in my boots up there and like okay okay that's why i was like so when do we drink i am done up here with the q a i just need to yeah. relax and joe I said can i get all the actors to step up on stage and i'm like no no <laughs> you didn't say we had to do that did <laughs> well i didn't want to pre-warn anybody so yeah. <laughs> it was but. pretty it was nice yeah, it was a pleasant surprise. I, I, I will say, I what was it earlier, 70% or whatever Joe had said, that uh, you don't get the finished was- pieces. But I didn't actually talk about the finished pieces you do get. <laughs> and I have a vault where I have put pieces that no one but me and the original filmmaker have ever seen. Amen. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not always, well, at least you got that other 20, 30%. No, yeah. it's actually lower than that. Yeah, of the, yeah, like of the, 20, of the 30%, yeah. 5% is on. <laughs> sure, I did one that was so bad. It was just edited together so poorly that one of my reactions had literally a 10 second pause in the editing to what the guy said when I reacted. So it was just really bad editing. And I showed it to my best friend at the time and she's like, don't ever show that to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> or edit it yourself. Oh, like, oh wow. Yeah. Fix that edit before you show it to you. So, well, just the whole thing. Bad oh, lighting, yeah, bad. Yeah. It was a student film, but oh, it was yeah. a brand new student. I think he was, he was uh, crashing that school's parking lot or something and didn't even go there. Uh-huh. But... Uh, <laughs> I wonder where he's at now. <laughs> <laughs> I am using that. Some famous director. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> Got to start somewhere. Mm. <laughs> so it is nice to have done something, especially something you put that much work into, and it's a good production afterwards. You know, a great production, because yeah, you're just like, oh, that everybody did their work. proud of to show to people, like, yeah. yeah, I did that. <laughs> not where you, you know, people are like, oh, oh, yeah, were you in this movie? Like, yeah, I was in that movie. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> But no, not in this case. It's not like yeah, because yeah. yeah, when I was doing the uh, actual shot list, you know, it's just like I saw it clearly. I saw, I, oh, saw, yeah. I saw all the shots clearly yeah. that I wanted to get. And then there were a few that when you're on set, you know, you get inspired to go, oh, well, let's try this one. Something that you didn't foresee. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so I think it's very, very important to do shot lists because a lot of people, when they do their shot list, they just kind of like, oh, well, this would be a good shot. That would be a good shot. But you have to... You, you have to have an emotional contact uh, yes con you know contact with with your work um, yeah well it's the whole thing right of like visual you're, you're telling the story through what the actors are saying and performing but you're also telling the story by what you're showing and how you're right. showing it and how you're right. shooting it there's its own visual language but a lot of times you can you know you can break those rules yeah um, because uh, there's one shot where when the dynamics of the scene changes and the woman who comes in, who was really humble and meek first, she turns completely 180 degrees into a nasty, you know, uh, more like Ma Barker. You uh-huh. know? And I shot that from above the first, you know, where oh, she yeah. just changes and you see them all, you see everybody down on, you know, below. And, uh, it, it just changes the whole dynamics. The, the whole movie yeah. just turns, turns at that point, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a main turning point there. But that couldn't have happened if you didn't, think about the shot 
more or less. Well, I thought that would have the most impact yeah. as far as just because you want to see everybody's reaction. Right. You know, at that point, you want to see how everyone's reacting to this woman just pulling out a gun and all of a sudden demanding it's like, well, how does she know about you know this money? How did you know what's going on? Like, so I wanted to see every, you know, I wanted everyone to be shown in that shot there. And then we went to like individual close-up shots and reaction shots and things like that. So, mm. and then the one of Leah Ruby, when uh, there's a low, there's an up shot of her while Milo's on the bed laughing at her, and she's she's just like pissed off because okay he's gonna tell me another lie now because uh-huh. he doesn't want to tell me where the, you know how much money now. And she's very dominant there, so yeah, it really works there. And, and oh, he's yeah. still dominant too, even though the shots, you know, oh, yeah. on his yeah. level. Yeah. So it's almost like, and then, and then there's that tension when she downs the the his. It's, even though you haven't seen the movie, it's kind of hard to explain. But um, explain it to me. Yeah, so she, <laughs> just go watch it. The, dr- she, the drink was supposed to be for him, for Milo, but she ends up like in a defiant mode, drinks it herself. Ah. You know. And then there's that moment where like you see there's a two shot of them. And he looks at her, and she's just waiting for him. Okay, your move, basically. So she stands defiant there, and he just slowly gets up, faces her, and then grabs her and then slams her against the wall and things like that. So it's just the whole the the dynamics of that. The the now they're on equal ground, even mm-hmm. though that she was the dominant one, you know, at that point. Like I said, you know, you have to see the movie, and you know. Oh yeah. But I, I'm, I'm giving the yeah. idea of it. Yeah. Basically, Ruby takes shit from no one. Yeah, <laughs> I love, I love. It Ruby. was a I you know Ruby. very <laughs> real relationship in the sense that neither you, you think okay he's trying to dominate her, but she has so much domination over him, and it it, it actually in my mind they're very equal partners. Yeah, they're very yeah. equal criminals. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I even in a relationship, yep. I, I have to agree. Like yeah. you said, women's Joe equality, earlier. man. Equality. <laughs> starting <laughs> women's. She was starting the women's uh, rights movement, the women's liberation movement. As a criminal, sixty-five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, that it's a good um, good example of not having to follow stereotypes when you're doing a period piece, right? Yeah. Like you could have someone, a, a woman, back in that time period, that is tough and and doesn't necessarily mean it's the you know woman's liberal movement or whatever right. it, it just means she's a tough woman and she doesn't take shit right. from anyone and that's the character um, right and it doesn't but it doesn't have to fall into the like i said caricature the caricature of, of yeah. what you know how women were portrayed in a lot of 50s films right like yeah. the film uh what they call femme fatale yeah femme you know. fatale it doesn't have to be that right because i didn't i didn't want the dialogue to be like you know corny because i've seen like remakes of film noir kind of and they'd use like yeah, this dame, you know, she's in my room, and this dame, you know, I don't want to go. Yeah, she's in my room. Yeah. And, and people, I've seen, funny, right? I've seen films that were trying to be serious with that kind of dialogue. <laughs> oh yeah, and the lighting and everything. I didn't want to do that. I mean, no one talked like that in real life. You yeah. know, it's just like I wanted to be, be like this movie. Be like, okay, we're eavesdropping on 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 this couple. Yeah. You know, in this one night of their event of their lives. Right. You know, I mean. When you see interviews of people back then, they just talk pretty much like the way we're talking right oh, now. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't not... talk with this like corny dialogue, right. you know. <laughs> so I didn't want to write anything like, "Well, Marla goes, yeah, you're just a, you're just a, you know, stupid dame kind of, you know." <laughs> <laughs> you oh know? man, now let's reshoot it. I want to yeah. try that. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I bet you're that little punk around the liquor store, yeah. huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't want to go that route because I've seen so many, you know, like people trying to do movies from that period that, yeah. that they write dialogues like that yeah. and they do the typical guy in an office all by himself with low light you know and he's got the drink in his oh, hand yeah, yeah, and you yeah. know a very stereotypical thing I mean when oh, it was done originally Vulcan. back at that time it worked because it yeah. was authentic yeah. but when you see remakes you know of people trying to do that it's just like oh come on we've seen that yeah, well you know, because even so when cliche. they're doing a remake of it like that it's like they're t- they think they're oh yeah I'm writing like how they did back then. It's like yeah. no, you're taking bits and pieces, and you're still, you're not because they they're not from that time. Right. It's not you're original. Not, anymore. Yeah, it's not original anymore. You're not putting it together. It's kind of like also when people do like '60s or '70s. And like, not everyone in the '70s wore disco outfits. Yeah, I yeah. know. Or the exactly. '60s, they didn't walk around with hippie outfits. Oh, exactly, on, you know? exactly. Because I, I'll find like my dad's old clothes, and I'm like. 
Well, wait, the collars. They're, they're normal size collars. Yeah. yeah. There's no fur anywhere. I yeah. remember I, two of my I best friends. I would have dressed like that. Sorry. Yeah, really? Yeah, but, well, two but, of my best friends were black in the 70s and neither had afros. So yeah, I don't know why yeah. everyone has an afro in the 70s. <laughs> yeah, those yeah, movies. Yeah, movies. Yeah, the movies. Yeah, they go cliche. Like you said earlier about the wardrobe and everything like that. You know, being, I didn't want the wardrobe to stand out and to, you know, like. Yeah. I seen some. To. I seen a movie. I'm not going to name it, but it came out a few years ago. But it was gangsters, um, and it was just like over the top with the with the wardrobe. Everything seemed to steal like the store away from the story, mm-hmm. you know. And then when they use these guns, like the the muzzle flash is so exaggerated too, you know. It's just like, come on, just you know, with Hollywood, Hollywood, you know. <clears throat> they use all the budget for all yeah, the and, and stuff. everything looks so glossy and like the. Everything, it's just over the top. Like, my favorite film of that era, I mean, that was made recently was uh, L.A. Confidential. Mm. They made that in a realistic way that looked like you were really back then. Very authentic, nothing... like Mad Men, you know. Yeah, like yes. Mad Men, too. They, did, they yeah. didn't, like, they didn't like highlight the wardrobe. They didn't highlight the, the right. lingo. They didn't highlight the style. They didn't steal. It wasn't, like, you know, hyper, yeah. you know. Yeah. It was, the, the story is what counted, and the imagery seemed realistic to what it would have been like back then. I mean, it just right. looks like looks like now, but you know, just styled a, a different, but not, diff- but not, yeah, not, not a whole, not highlighted, and not not yeah. over overdone, you know. Yeah. And that's why I wanted this film to be kind of. I used uh, just the lighting example of L.A. Confidential for this because they didn't do that typical film noir lighting, you know, dark and stark angles oh, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that so i wanted to keep it more that way in that sense right, um, right. because like I, we said earlier um the lighting uh was important to me that uh it motels you know have cheap lighting a lot of times they the lighting is just very basic and just mm-hmm. there's nothing romantic about the lighting there's no. nothing dramatic <laughs> it's just boom on and everything is mm-hmm. you know but I didn't want it to, I didn't want that sitcom lighting either to where everything's washed out and right, right. you know. He literally foot. brought a lamp. Yeah. <laughs> he said we we had a floor lamp. None, yeah. No house lights, none of the, <laughs> the lamps that you see on in the room were not yeah. the primary light. They were just more of a prop. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I, see that's the thing is now I have to watch it. You have to watch yeah. it. Yeah. And I feel like I have to watch it as a drinking game also. Yeah. There are a few things. I Every can kiss. Do. Right. Every kiss. <laughs> well, there's a lot of drinking in the movie. There's, there's a lot yeah. of drinking yeah. in the movie. Every too. time they drink. Oh, there oh, you go. Yeah. Every time someone takes a drink, you, you take a drink. A oh, oh, it's, it's it's there's only minutes. one glass, so it'll make you feel better. It won't be too much. It's like, <laughs> you know, I've seen obviously seen the movies quite a few times, and every time I watch it, I just like I feel like having a drink. You know. Like, <laughs> you know what would have been an absolute nightmare is the we even talked about it during the shoot. The flask that holds the alcohol is a complete like leather bound uh, like stainless steel silver flask so you don't actually see the liquid and I remember Joe and I talking about it early on if you do a bottle trying to keep the continuity of the height of liquid in that bottle is gonna be an absolute nightmare because well just the number of takes not to mention from one week to the next Mm I could only imagine. I mean, we see it in professional Hollywood oh, yeah. productions oh, yeah. where the glass up, is full, uh, uh, now yeah, it's yeah, down. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, wow, yeah. someone missed that. <laughs> yeah. I remember one that they the they were holding champagne and the foam oh. was really fresh on the uh-huh. glasses and they're talking and they're talking and the phone's not going down because it's fresh. Cut to the other girl. Foam's gone. Yeah. The foam <laughs> is gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, those are things to watch out for, but at the same time, Eh, exactly. You know, it yeah, but yeah, if you, but yeah. isn't it if the story is holding yes. you on, you shouldn't be noticing exactly. that right, stuff? Right, I mean, right, obviously, right, an right, elephant right. in the room is going to catch your attention. Yes. But wow, wow yeah. I was really—I can't even tell you the story or the movie because all I can remember are those <laughs> champagne glasses. Yeah, exactly. Foam, no foam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so, yeah. I mean, if, it's obvious if, like, yeah, if they're, if they're holding the the champagne glass and then the other cut, shot they switch it and, it and they're holding a snake and you're like okay yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah, not yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah they're they're totally different now but yeah if little changes little mistakes it's something for you to watch for but yeah if the story's a good story the yeah, actor's yeah. good acting exactly that would be a funny it movie. doesn't yeah. matter you know well you know there's actually uh is it still out there that chandelier thing is it a prop oh yeah yours or yeah it's mine yeah, it's okay gone now, but... oh is it that it kept oh, falling. it's not there it kept oh, yeah, falling it's, or whatever it keeps, yeah, it's the somewhere. chandelier pieces on that thing were possessed 
time. Because once they started moving, they didn't stop. It took oh, a long remember? time, yeah. Oh. We would have times. to go have lunch or something and come back. Oh, no, the one's still rocking back and forth. <laughs> it's subtle enough, but it would be picked up by the camera. Oh, yeah. Because they were prisms. You yeah, know, prisms. So light, yeah, yeah but, exactly. Uh, 